Welcome to June's Legal Challenge. Today's problem is cheapest flights within K stops. There are N cities connected by M flights. Each flight starts from city U and arrives at V with the price W. Given all cities and flights, um, starting city source and destination city destination, your task is to find the cheapest price from source to destination with up to K stops. So this is a variation of Dixter's algorithm, uh, but the wrench here is that it's only going to be up to k stops. With Dijkstra's algorithm, we always just minimize, minimize. We don't care how many stops um, we can make. But if you don't know Dijkstra's algorithm, I highly recommend you read up on that because this isn't going to make a lot of sense without it. All right, so what do we want to start doing this with? We First, we need to make an adjacency list, right? So all ad an adjacency list is, is going to be a list or a dictionary. We'll make a list here. Um, with the destinations that it can go to along with its weight, right? So we'll have a list of lists and we'll say for um, blank in range of N, which is the number of cities. And we'll also create an output that's going to be just um, a number. I'm going to make it a float infinite so that I'm going to make this the highest number possible in Python for the same thing in range of n. And this is going to be what's indicating us, indicating to us the minimum weight or cost that's going to cost to get to this city. All right, so great. So now we want to create our, well, first let's initialize our source to equal zero. Okay, so first let's build our agency list. And the way that we can do that is go through all our flights, the u starting city, the v, destination city and the weight, the cost. In flights, what we're going to do, we're going to just add to our adjacency list for the source city. It's a list, so we'll just append to it a tuple. Um, it doesn't need to be a tuple, let's think. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. It can be, it can be a list. Um, doesn't matter. We'll make it a tuple and we'll say for V and W. Okay, so that will create our adjacency list. Let me make sure that's right. And yeah, that should. Okay, so now we have that and we want to have our graph. And this is going to be a queue so that we could travel through our, our graph of cities. And first we'll append to this graph the source city. We'll make it a tuple and we'll say source city. And we'll also add negative one. And this is going to be the number of stops that we've made so far. And that's going to allow us to um, stop our loop. Normally, you, you use a visited set to know when to stop uh, going through our, our graph. But we can use number of k to do that instead. So OK, while there's items in our graph, what do we do? Let's first pop off the item and say, OK, we'll pop left. What's it going to look like? It'll be the city that we could, well, the city that we're at. That, that's, destinations or the source city and the uh, stops, right? So graph.pop left. Now, first thing we want to check here is to see if stops, the number of stops we made is greater or equal to our max stops, right? Because if it is, then, then we have to stop this. Um, so if stop is greater or equal to K, which is given to us up here, then we'll just continue. We'll just stop that. Okay, otherwise, what are we going to do? We want to say, all right, for, let's check our agency list, V of W in um, ADJ U, that's our source city. Let's check all the like the cities I can con it's connected to. And what we want to do is check to see if our output, um, for our source city plus the W, that's our weight that cost it costs to to get there um, to get to our destination city. If this is what less than our output V, then we want to update it. Okay, and once we do that, then we can add to our graph. We'll say, okay, now we can add 
um, the the destination city or the the city that we're at at this point in the graph, and we'll add to our stop. We'll add plus one. So once we finish our traversal, um, we should be able to just return our output for the destination city, DST. But quick thing, it's possible that we're not able to get to this destination city, right? So if that's the case, they want us to return a negative one. Uh, they mentioned that somewhere here. So we'll, if there's no such route, we'll just output negative one. So if our output destination, if it equals, still if it equals float infinite, then return negative one. Otherwise return whatever we've calculated. Okay, so I thought this was gonna work um, and it does work on our test case. Make sure that this should be 200. But when I submit it, you'll see that it actually does fail. And the reason for that is a little bit hard to explain, but here's the basic idea. Like we start from city zero, right? And we can go to one and two and we'll update that to uh, what's going on? one and five, right? Then we'll travel from one and two and we'll update our output at two to um, no longer five, but to two. But that's, here's the thing. We, we're only allowed to make one stop. So once we get to the last one here, two to three, we'll say, oh, okay. The cost, the minimum cost of getting to two was only two. Now the minimum cost of getting to three from two to three is one, so it should be three. But that's not correct because we've exceeded the number of stops that we made. And this was the part that kind of confused me because the way Dijkstra's algorithm works is, is just constantly minimizing our output. And we can't do that here because we need to make sure that the number of stops we're making in our path is is less... Um, no, no greater than the max stops that we're allowed to make. So how, how can we solve this? Well, one way that you can do this is to add it to our, our graph instead of our output. So whatever costs that we've been calculating so far, we'll add that to our, to our graph, our Q. So we'll make this cost, or here, let's we'll start off with zero. And what we're going to do is pop off the cost that we've calculated so far. And that's going to allow us not to add it to our um, to the output that we've calculated, but rather rather the cost that we've calculated so far. So this is, this is going to make it a little bit easier to, to track this. We'll use costs that we popped off in this graph instead. So it's not going to be inside that, inside that output list. So here it would be what? Cost plus W. So let me make sure that looks good. Uh, if we uh, just add cost, I'm pretty sure this will work. There, so th that's accepted. Yeah, so this, um, again, is a variation of Dijkstra's algorithm. What's interesting here is we have to track the cost so far in order to get the right number. And, and we don't need a visited set because we have this K that's gonna allow us to stop our, stop our, stop our loop instead. Uh, so that, that's the difference. Um, you know, if I was to solve this in an interview, it would have probably taken me a while. But if you have a good handle on Dijkstra's algorithm, you should be able to solve this. So thank you.